Right, so we have a slight problem with our food mixer. That being, so it doesn't mix food anymore. And I have to confess, that was my fault for breaking it. You can probably see the issue. It's just a little catch in here. This bit isn't turning. But you can hear the motor's fine. So, and I've already had it apart, so I know the problem is that it has a drive belt, or rather, it did. Um, and like I said, I was trying to um, perhaps make it do things it wasn't supposed to or not capable of, and that broke. Now, you can't, at least I don't think you can, buy these new anymore. And as it turns out, to buy a new food processor, you're looking at, I don't know, maybe about 30 quid, 25, 30 quid for a half decent one. But sometimes it's worth checking for spares for them. And as it turns out, I was able to find a replacement drive belt. And it cost me about £3 and then about £2.90, something like that, for postage. So it's cost £6.90 in all. So for £7, I should be able to fix the food processor, which is still perfectly fine. All the attachments work. And to change the drive belt, all you have to do is undo the bottom of it. But first, make sure it's unplugged. Any electrical item, make sure it's unplugged. And with this one, it's a few screws in the bottom. And there's uh, four of them. Of course, had I not broken it, I wouldn't be doing this now. Uh, but there you go. It has been struggling, if I'm honest. We don't really use it for much. Maybe for making breadcrumbs and such like. But it, um, it's been a good little thing. We bought it new. I don't know, it must be about 10 years ago now. It's going strong. Until I got my hands on it and broke it. There you go. So, if we got all the screws out. There we go. You can see where the drive belt's supposed to go. Around that one, which is the one that turns the spindle that all the attachments will have you put on. And this one obviously where the motor is so I'm assuming because I haven't actually tried the new belt and it seems to be the right size we can just pop it over the big wheel like so and there are little lugs on there to make sure that it's right and then spread it over the smaller wheel that's probably an easier way of doing this I suspect Let's just see if we can make the motor move a little bit. There we go. How about that? That was easy. So push that all the way down there. And this little screw and the spring washer back in. Tighten everything up, give it a bit of a turn. Well, the belt seems to be where it needs to be. And all we've got to do is put it back together and see if it does actually drive it. Make sure the cable's in the right spot and not being trapped by any of the screws. There we go. Need to put the screws in now. Tighten it up. And test it.
There we go. Well, that feels a bit better. We'll plug him in. So, all right, admittedly, if I hadn't have broken it, I wouldn't have to repair it. But it's still better than buying a new one, especially when it works perfectly well. And it cost, like I said, about £7 for a new belt and the postage. And there we go. Find the model number was fairly easy, because on the bottom here, with all the information on it, Kenwood, it says FP108 series, so all you need to do is um, put that into Google or your search engine of choice and um, search for a Kenwood FP108 drive belt. I found quite a few sites that were selling them. Um, I picked the cheapest one for obvious reasons and uh, that's it. But there are places like uh, websites like Partmaster is one where they have parts for just about everything on there. All you need to do is find the model number and do a quick search. So there we go. One fixed food processor, and it's better than buying a new one. Simple to do, and that's it, really. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs>